So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, hello, and thank you all for joining SciTech here today to learn about how you can improve your shop floor processes with scheduled charts. Scheduled charts are a great tool where you can have the historical need to know data and metrics about how your shop floor is performing and will enable you to take action to consistently improve your shop floor procedures so that you can hit those quotas as smoothly as possible and have what is now considered a needed edge over your competitors. So first, just want to introduce myself. My name is Jeff York. I am the marketing manager here at SciTech. I have been with SciTech since September of 2021. And you know what? I'm just happy to be here today to uh, talk to you guys about how you can implement smart factory technology on your guys' shop floors to just improve your processes and increase your shop floor machine's performance. So we're going to be doing a lot more of these kind of uh, regularly scheduled webinars, and they're going to be single topic focus, uh, as you probably have already guessed. Today's is going to be about scheduled and safe charts. Uh, at the end of April, we're going to have a cool one about our manufacturing dashboards uh, con uh, concerning things like the RTV, the real time viewer, and, and some of the mobile applications such as the equipment list and the uh, real time list. And then at the end of June, we're going to have a real big one as well with uh, CG Tech Farrakut that is going to be uh, about our recent integration with them, the CNC Machine Connect. Now, I do understand that I'm the marketing guy, but we also do have our product manager, Christopher Hamlin here. Uh, he's going to be answering any of the uh, kind of technical questions you guys may or may not have. So there's a little uh, HUD on the left side of your screen where you can uh, ask a question. And then at the very end of this webinar, Chris is going to be answering those for you guys. So kind of without really any further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the uh, material of all this. Uh, this is not going to be too long. It's going to be about 20 minutes. Just going to kind of uh, show you guys uh, what scheduled charts can do and how to do them. So the first thing I want to do is uh, show you guys what we're looking at right now, which is uh, data display. Data display is our uh, web browser-based uh, application. It's also on mobile as well. Uh, we also do have a Windows desktop application uh, for SciTech Data Exchange. Now, for those of you that have been with us for a while, you might remember that Save Charts, which you can find down here at the bottom in this bottom row, uh, were originally in our Windows desktop application, but we decided to bring them inside of the data display uh, browser-based application, really for some just kind of like uh, form commonality to just make them easier to find. Uh, so even if you've never even had any uh, use of our save charts before, uh, we're gonna run through real quick about uh, how to use them because they're the basis for how scheduled charts work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click on a uh, summary chart and this is your equipment status summary chart. So let's just say I'm curious to know what was going on with all of my shop floor equipment within the last week. So one of the first thing you could do, we have a bunch of filters uh, on this page. The first thing you did, can do is check to see, uh, you know, what kind of time frame you're looking for to get some knowledge and insight about what's going on. So I'm going to select last week, and that's going to run from Sunday to Saturday, and then from there we can, you know, select our shifts. So I want to just know what's going on in every single one of our morning, midday, and night shifts, and this is going to give us some uh, historical feedback from the dates ranging from February 19th to February 26th. And over here on the left side, um, you can see the you can select the equipment you want to get insight about. So right now, I have about 10 machines selected from our Denver plant, and then one down here at the bottom from our Fort Collins plant. And then from there, we can kind of just filter uh, some more, you know, useful things like our equipment status. And we have general and specific. I always go for, for specific. It'll just kind of give you more in-depth information about what is going on with your shop floor equipment. And then we can also look at things like part numbers and work orders. And then down here for options, we can change the display format for what the chart is going to look like. I prefer bar, but you can also look at pies and donut charts related and then kind of change up some of the uh, display formatting as well. So let's go up here and take a look at what this chart looks like. So this is gonna give us basically the historical performance of all of our shop floor equipment within the last week. So right down over here on the left side, we got our 840D. 
This was running in about normal cycle for about 40% of last week, as well as was also running in 41% of unknown downtime. So that kind of gives us a, like, we need to, you know, do some figuring out what was going on with this machine. And there's some other things that you can see over here on the right hand column. Uh, they're color coordinated for machine statuses. Um, then you can see these displayed over here. So we have some breaks, we have some quality issues, we have some tooling and some tooling changes. So let's go back out to the screen. Now let's just say, I don't wanna have to go through that entire process every single time I wanna know what happened within the last week of you know what happened with our shop floor equipment. So I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom and now you can see that we have save chart options. So let's just say I want to save this chart so that I can always have access to what happened in a specific time frame. So what I can go up here and do is just say last week for the title of it. And then underneath that, we can have the description. I'm calling it ESS just for the acronym for equipment status summary chart. I always put the chart type in the description. Now, when I hit save and we go back out here to our launch pad, we will see that save chart populate down here. So now that we uh, you know, know how to build a save chart, let's talk about how we can schedule that save chart. So I'm gonna click on this one right here that I already made. This is a yesterday day shift chart. It's basically the exact same chart that we were looking at before. Uh, it's an equipment status summary chart, but this one only just goes over the previous day. So I'm gonna, so let's go over here and click on the filters. Now I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom and you can see now that we have our scheduled chart options. So right now, the first thing you want to do is just to make sure that that is enabled. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to know who it's going to be sent out to. So uh, this user is logged in as who is the logged in user. So that would technically be myself. So I would email this to myself. Um, but let's just go with a company group. And right now I have this as all data exchange users. So we have a bunch of other different options inside here for user groups. We have administrators, we have all data exchange users. And if you're one of our silver or gold licensing members, we also have our ODI users, reporting managers and supervisors. There is no limit to the amount of users and or user groups that you can have for SciTech data exchange. So the next thing I wanna do is just say like, you know, like how often do I wanna get this sent to myself? So I'm gonna click on daily. You also have weekly, monthly or quarterly. So I also have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, basically every day throughout the working week. And the reason why is, it's like, let's just say that I have a production floor meeting at, you know, every morning, 830, and I want to send this to myself. And you can do that right here at 730. The reason why I want to have it sent to me at 730 is just, that'll just give me ample time to, you know, just be in, up to date with what is going on with my shop floor. Now, another cool thing that we can do that's kind of in line with what I just described is our resolution. So at the top here, we have some very common uh, computer sizes, 4K, HD, and laptop, common tablet sizes, uh, and then phone sizes, and then custom sizes as well. So let's just say, you know, you have like an 8K TV out on your shop floor or something like that. It doesn't matter, big or small, we can fit it on there and make sure that you guys are uh, getting your schedule charts displayed exactly how you want them. So I chose phone. For that specific reason if you know i could get that sent to me you know while i'm letting the dog out or having breakfast or something like that uh every morning to prepare for my you know production meeting or anything so once again you hit save you'll see that up here that the, uh, the schedule chart was scheduled successfully so now what i want to do is kind of just go over some like good use case scenarios for everything i'm going to switch back over here to my powerpoint Well, you can all see this. I'm going to go over here to our use cases. So, one of the use cases I think would be a good, uh, you know, for a schedule chart would be part counts. So, let's say shop floor personnel can receive a schedule chart covering how many part counts were produced in a specific time frame to ensure that those quotas are being hit. This is particularly a boon for some types of, of employment levels as they don't even need to be inside the actual physical plants anymore to get this kind of data about how their shop floors are running and can attend to other matters while receiving the need to know information. The next one would be like a timeline chart. And that's just like a general kind of uh, you know, equipment status summary chart that goes over you know, what is going on inside of your shop floor. And this is another case. So let's just say every morning before doing a gimbal walk, 
you have a production meeting about the day prior. And I know I already kind of like went over this, but we're going to do it again. Uh, Psych Tech Data Exchange could have a scheduled chart emailed to all regular attendees about a half hour or so before a meeting, giving them and everybody else ample time to prepare, ensuring that everyone has the same facts about utilization, downtime, and overall production. So another one that I showed you guys was the uh, equipment status summary chart that went over the previous day. And this isn't an additional example. But let's just say that you have an employee uh, that can get in a scheduled chart that covers the general timeline and equipment status chart that can detail which one of their, you know, like operators or machines are kind of having some trouble with. So, you know, I'm sure all of you guys at some point have had, you know, a bunch of new guys join or you've got a bunch of new equipment that has a learning curve. And I do understand that there is some, uh, you know, industry issues with a lot of the talent kind of leaving the industry, they're retiring, and you're not seeing the same kind of stuff entering the industry. So you're having a lot of new guys that need some training and stuff like that. You know, this is something that kind of get that can get sent to managers and stuff like that to kind of remind them that like, hey, there's some, you know, people that might need a little bit of training on specific things. And this is some issues that are causing. Uh, another good chart that could kind of go over this kind of stuff would be like alarm downtime paredes as well. So that's just a few use cases that I wanted to kind of discuss. If you guys have any specific, you know, kind of questions about use cases, feel free to reach out to SciTech directly or your reseller as well. Uh, they will be more than happy to cover anything that, you know, you could kind of do with these neat little features that are inside of uh, data exchange. So one of the other things that we kind of run into is, you know, like, why are these important? So now that we've seen a bit about scheduled and saved charts, a common question we get is, yeah, like why are these important if we already have all these great manufacturing charts and dashboards within SciTech Data Exchange? So one great aspect of scheduled charts is that it's another form of notification. Data Exchange prides itself on giving operators and end users tons of different uh, uses for notifications. We have text, SMS, email, and Microsoft Teams notification. And if you're on our silver or gold licensing level, we also have a flashing ODI screen for your operators and everything. This helps you get the chart in your inbox and it can kind of serve as a reminder to look at the data that you know, you're seeing in real time and it can complement that. Dashboards are great. They're extremely feature rich. They provide a lot of value, but a chart showing up in your inbox kind of complements all that by providing data that you need to know. And may also serve as a reminder just to glance up at some of that stuff as well. So another advantage of schedule charts is that employees can get charts sent to them without really even needing to learn anything about data exchange itself. Data exchange is something that we look at as a complement to your, you know, the processes that you guys already have in place. It is not meant to be something to feel like another tacked on routine or anything like that. It's supposed to be implemented kind of painlessly and seamlessly. And, you know, this can, you know, allow your operators and your other personnel on your shop floor to really just kind of get back to their day-to-day -day duties while also, you know, empowering them to get other things accomplished and to, you know, make sure your shop floor is just running as lean as possible. So one of the other things I want to talk about that's basically another uh, cool little feature inside of our data display application as well as the desktop version is uh, our reporting application uh, for everything. So um, let's just say, you know, and I know that I, I'm the visual guy here. I'm kind of like the office artist and everything, but I do understand that I'm talking to a lot of engineers um, and that, you know, you guys lean a little bit more logically and numerically based than what I do. So let's just go back in here into data exchange. Just a second. So out here we have our Excel reports. These are basically what the save charts are, but they can come inside of a uh, an Excel document that if you see this little icon up here, basically everything that I just ran through, if you go up here and you click on this icon, you will see exactly what was uh, there previously. All right, let's go back. And um, that's kind of really all I got for you guys today. Um, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint here and we're going to discuss some of the upcoming webinars. Now I did bring these up earlier, but at the end of April, we are going to be having a webinar about our manufacturing dashboards, uh, if you guys have used data exchange before, we're going to go into some deep dives about how to properly use the RTV real-time viewer, and as well as some of the things that you can do with 
the mobile applications with the equipment view and the equipment list. Uh, they're basically just like a real time display of what is going on with your uh, shop floor equipment. And then at the end of June, we're going to have a real big one. Um, we have a uh, webinar concerning the data exchange integration with CG Tech Faricut. We have our module in there now called CNC Machine Connect. It can basically, you know, like let you know what is going on inside of your machine at all times via Vericut. And then with the release of Vericut 9.4, we're going to have a live streaming feature in there as well. Uh, you guys are not going to want to miss that. So from here, I am going to let Chris take over. Chris is our product manager. Uh, he is going to be answering any of the questions that you guys may or may not have about the scheduled charts that we went over. Chris, are you there? Can you take over? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, I, I, I won't take over the meeting or anything, but I'll just um, do some talking here. So we had a couple questions come in. Um, and let's see here. Just kind of scanning through. So. Um, do the charts have to be scheduled from a browser on a PC or can that also be done from the phone app? So the charts, uh, the new feature with the scheduled charts can be saved from uh, and scheduled from the mobile apps as well as from the browser. It's not a feature that is included in WP, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, data exchange client. As we transition to a mobile product and just something that's a little bit more flexible for the users, um, the newer features are going to be added into the, the web and mobile-based apps going forward. Um, I kind of answered the, sec the second question with that first uh, answer, but uh, uh, say uh, you mentioned that save charts uh, can only be accessed in data display and not in the desktop application. Why is that? And again, it's just commonly used functionality, uh, such as charts uh, are being moved into the browser and mobile apps to make it easier to access them. So, so everyone, um, so they all can be accessed from a variety of different devices. So we're not just using, again, the desktop application to do that. There's multiple devices that have the ability to do that. And let's see. Uh, uh, what format are the charts when received? Uh, by email, uh, they are in a PNG file, which is an image file that just show up as an email attachment. So they're not included in the body of the email. They are an attachment and you just click on them and double uh, and then it'll open up that image and show you the chart that was requested. Uh, this can also be forwarded to anyone on your team. Uh, so that makes for nice and easy distribution uh, of that chart to anyone that did not receive it from the scheduling. Um, I think all these other questions are more on a, I'll, I'll get back with the individual. So I think those are good for the group. Um, if anyone else has any questions right now, feel free to chat in the Q and A box, uh, in the left. Otherwise I think I am done. Oh, hold on. Two just popped in here uh is it possible for the report to be sent by a text um or does it have to be an email address so we should be able to send the um it should be able to send by text uh you can work with our support team to help you set that up we basically just need to know what the text conversion is so that it just gets to the right provider so it's usually like for example if you have verizon it's your phone number at vtext.com and it'll come in the same way as the email. So you'll see the attachment. So um, if you'd like, just go ahead and reach out to the support team. You can do that um, at either support at SciTech.com or dxhelp at SciTech.com. Uh, those are our two support addresses. They'll get you to someone to assist you with that. Um, Chris, there actually is another question I think I can just go ahead and answer for everybody. Uh, this came from Ms. Sarah Forbes. Uh, yeah, so if you guys are registered for this, uh, within about five minutes or after uh, this is after this ends, you will get a video recording of this, uh, as well as even the people that didn't show up. So let's just say you know you do want to attend one of these uh, coming up here in the next couple of months, but you know you 
can't necessarily attend it, uh, you will be getting a video recording of all these. Uh, they will be sent to your uh, inbox. And if you have Microsoft Outlook, they will probably be going to the other folder. And if you have something like Gmail, definitely check like your promotions or spam folder. Yeah, that was oh, the no. last question that I had. So oh. I, that was um, that was it for me. If anyone else has any questions, again, we can reach out to the support team here. Um, if something comes to mind later, or if you are watching the recording of uh, what Jeff just did, you can reach out to the support team with any questions as well. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, thank you all again for joining us here today. Uh, we appreciate it. And if you have any more questions, like I said, feel, uh, please feel free to reach out to SciTech directly or contact your reseller. Uh, other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and thank you for uh, being here.